Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about 10 things that are absolutely killing your gains. Let's get into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is consistency. And I've reiterated this in many other videos, but consistency is always going to be key. Like if you go to the gym five days, one week, two the next, then one the next, then five the next, and then one the next, then five the next, then take a week off. Like you're going to see some progress there because I don't know how many weeks that was, but like you just went to the gym probably like 20 times in like a month and a half, which is definitely solid, but you're not being consistent. And like those random sporadic breaks where like using the example I just gave, there was a two week span where you went to the gym two days. Like that is not enough. You need to be going at least, I'd say, three days a week minimum to the gym. And if you're sticking with that and being consistent, you will see progress. But consistency is so key. I will also put out this little disclaimer that all of these 10 things are not in any particular order. I did put consistency first because I think it is so important. But these are in no particular order. It's just the order I came up with. Okay, so the next thing is having proper nutrition. Your diet is so important for the gym, especially so if you're trying to lose weight, you need to be in a calorie deficit there. You're not going to lose weight if you're not in a calorie deficit. And the same thing for putting on weight. If you're trying to put on weight, if you're not in a calorie surplus, you're not going to put on weight. And then there's also the fact of protein. You need to be eating enough protein for your diet. If you're not eating at least, I don't care if you're cutting, bulking, main gaining, maintaining, I don't care what you're doing. If you have gym goals, if you are not eating at least 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight, you're not eating enough protein. You need to be getting that amount because that is enough that if you're in a surplus, you can be putting on muscle. And if you're in maintenance or cutting, you're not going to lose as much muscle. You're going to mitigate your muscle loss. So your diet is just so important for the gym. Like you can be consistent in the gym. But if you don't have a good diet, you'll see some gains. But like once you dial in your diet and the gym at the same time, the amount your progress is just going to like explode if you haven't been doing that prior is actually crazy. Like those are two of the most important things for you to see gains. But not having that proper diet is really going to be just be killing your gains. Okay, so the next thing is going to be sleep or because we're talking about killing your gains, a lack of sleep. Sleep is so important for the gym. And I feel like not enough people realize this because obviously in the gym, that's where most people are like, oh, you make gains in the gym, which is true in a sense. But the gym is where you're tearing the muscle and you're breaking it down. But for your muscles to grow, they need to build back up. Where does that happen? Sleep. So if you're not getting enough sleep, let's say you're getting like five hours of sleep a night, which is pretty bad. You need to be getting more sleep than that. If you're getting five hours sleep a night, but you're still lifting consistently, you're just tearing the muscle every day. And it's going back a little bit at night. But you're only getting five hours of sleep. So your muscle is not getting time to fully repair at night. So in essence, you're tearing it a lot, but then you're not giving it that adequate time to repair and grow. So sleep is going to be crucial. You should be aiming to get somewhere between seven to nine hours of sleep at night. Obviously, it's going to be person dependent on how much sleep you need, but you really need sleep if you want to actually see gains in the gym. Like lifting without getting proper sleep, it's one of those things where like, obviously you can make some amount of gains without any, if you're doing a lot of things poorly, but sleep is one of those really crucial things that you should dial in. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is a lack of intensity. There are so many people, and I feel like this is mostly more gym beginners that will go into the gym and they just pick a magic number there because they heard that 10 reps is good or 12 reps is good. So they'll just pick a weight and do 10 to 12 reps, whatever it is, and just stop at that number. But if that wasn't challenging, then you're not training with any intensity. Like if I just picked up a 20 pound dumbbell and started doing curls, I and just stopped at 10 reps. Like I'm not really doing anything. I need heavier weight so that eight to 10 reps is where I'm actually struggling. And then that's where I'm achieving muscular failure. So you need to be training with adequate intensity, because if you're just showing up and picking some arbitrary number that you think is magically going to make you make gains, you're just genuinely lying to yourself. Like there isn't some magic number where you make gains at rep wise. 
it's you have to be training with adequate intensity so that you're truly pushing the muscle and giving it that reason to change because if you don't give your muscle a reason to change or your body a reason to change it's not going to like if you just started picking up a five pound dumbbell and doing all your workouts with that you're probably not going to make any gains because you're not giving your body a reason to have to make the change which if you think about it putting on muscle is a change for your body so if you're not giving your body a reason to make that change it's not going to okay the next thing i want to talk about is overtraining. this one is definitely a little complicated because you definitely don't want to under train either which is what i basically was just talking about with like a lack of intensity but on average according to like scientific studies you should be trying to put in somewhere from like eight to t eight or 10 to like 20 to 25 actual working sets per each muscle each week. If you're doing more than that, you're not giving your body enough time to recover. So if you go in and you're doing like four working sets, four exercises twice a week, you're at, I think that would be 32 working sets a week. You've now passed the threshold of where you're like making gains. Now you're just over training and you're not giving your body enough time to recover so that you can actually make the gains. So this is definitely a tricky one with overtraining, but do not overtrain. Give your body time to rest. The gym is one of the few places where just because you put more time into it doesn't mean you're gonna get more results. And what I mean by that is like, if you go into the gym and just train for six hours a day every day, you're not gonna make more gains than someone who trains for like an hour and a half every day for like six days a week. You're probably honestly gonna see less gains than them because you're not giving your body enough time to recover from the tearing of the muscle that you're doing in the gym. So make sure you're not overtraining. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is training with improper form. That can definitely be killing your gains because one, you might be hitting m muscles that you don't mean to be hitting because you're using improper form. So what I mean by that is, so let's say you're doing like a flat dumbbell bench press. If you have your arms flared out like this, like all the way up or something, obviously you're going to be hitting other muscles. Yes, you're still going to be hitting your chest, but if your arms are like all the way up here, you're going to be engaging your shoulders and other muscles. And honestly, your chest might not even be the primary muscle that you're actually hitting because your form is so bad. Form is definitely crucial. And another reason that this could be killing your gains is because if you're training with improper form, there you're definitely increasing the likelihood that you're gonna get injured. And guess what? If you get injured, you can't lift at all. So if you tear something and can't lift for two months or whatever, because you need to get surgery or go to PT and recover from your injury, guess what? That's two months where you can't make gains. Yes, maybe you could like hit legs if you tear something in your upper body or vice versa, but whatever, like you're still not gonna be able to make the gains that you want because you were training with bad form, you weren't paying enough attention to how to properly do the exercise, got injured, and now you can't train at all. So make sure you're training with proper form so you're not killing your gains. The next thing that kills so many people's gains, and this is definitely more true for newer lifters, is having unrealistic goals or just setting bad goals in general. Like some people's goal, let's say, let's say we're talking about someone who's overweight. Sometimes their goal is to lose weight. Let's say you're 260 pounds and you're trying to get down to like 180 to 200, right? If your goal is to lose weight, you can lose weight in the first two weeks by losing two pounds, but you wanted to lose five, but you didn't set that as a goal. So you might just give up because you set this original goal that you just don't think you're going to be able to reach. Also, like you need to be specific with your goals. You need to set a goal that's specific. So instead of just saying you want to lose weight, maybe maybe the person was as specific as I kind of described and they were 260 and they want to get to let's say 180. That's a nice goal but by when? Are you giving yourself five years? Because you can definitely do that in five years but you can also definitely do that way faster than five years. So when you're setting a goal for what you want to do in the gym you need to set what you want to do which would be going from 260 to 180. Then you need to set a time frame. So let's say that's a pretty big weight loss. Let's say you want to do that in a year but then what you should also do is set either monthly goals or maybe two month goals, maybe even weekly goals. Maybe your goal is to lose two pounds a week. And then you do the math and figure out how many weeks that's gonna take you to lose however much weight you're trying to lose. 
What I'm trying to get at though is there's so many people that just show up with the goal of like, oh, I wanna get in shape. What does that mean to you? What does in shape mean to you? You need to set smart, specific goals so that you can go into it with your training, your diet, and your routine and everything with intention. Okay, so the next thing that's killing your gains is, and this is, I feel like, more for people who have tried once or twice to, let's say, lose the weight or put on weight and then have failed. It's a lack of self-belief. You need to believe in yourself that you can do it. And obviously, you can't just magically give yourself this self-belief. But one thing you can do is create these short, short-term short goals. So maybe like two-week goals or one-month goals that are stepping stones towards your larger goal. But what those short-term goals can do is they can build that confidence and instill that confidence in you so that you actually believe that you can hit these long-term goals. Because obviously, let's go back to the example I used for the last one. It's a very daunting task to say, oh, I want to go from 260 pounds to 180 pounds. That's a lot of weight to lose. But it's a lot more manageable and reasonable to say, oh, I want to lose five pounds this month and go from there. Like you're just going to focus on that first month losing five pounds and that's it. And then go to that second month, let's lose another five pounds. Third month, let's lose another five pounds. Fourth month, let's lose another five pounds. And guess what? Now you're down 20 pounds. So if you were at 260, now you're at 240. Now you're only 60 pounds away, which means you're 25% of the way there because we started at 260, we're trying to get to 180. So just setting those short-term goals can help you believe in yourself and get that self-confidence that allows you to actually believe that you can finally achieve this big goal. So give yourself that undeniable stack of proof that you can actually do it. Okay, this next one kind of coincides with the first tip of consistency, but it's having an inconsistent routine. So this would be like, if you show up to the gym and have no clue what you're gonna do that day, you don't even know what muscles you're gonna hit. Like that's an example of having an inconsistent routine and that's gonna kill your gains because you don't even know what you're showing up at the gym to do outside of exercise. Like exercise is all you're showing up to the gym that you planned on doing. You don't even know what muscles you're gonna hit. You don't know what exercises you're gonna do. This should be something that you have even somewhat decently planned out. So what I mean by this is I have like three pretty typical workouts that I do. I have like my push workout, my pull workout, and then my shoulders and legs workout. So I know going in what I'm likely gonna try and do on all of those days. But I also know I have, I usually do push, pull, legs and shoulders, rest day, or if I don't feel like I need the rest day, I'll hit that again and then put in a rest day. But I have a plan, I know what I'm gonna do. Like, I don't, if, let's say it's like a Wednesday, I just think back to what I did on Tuesday and now you already know what I'm gonna do on that Wednesday then. Like, I don't have to like think and come up with this entire workout plan. I already did that, that's in the past. I made my workout plan based on me with my personalized workouts and what I want to do, what I like, what I need to do to be able to see progress. And then I have this plan in place and then I'm really just implementing it instead of just randomly coming up with some workout to do because you want to exercise today because you know it's good to exercise, but you don't actually know what you truly want to do outside of getting better shape. So make sure you're showing up to the gym with a plan so you actually know what you're doing. Because if you don't have a plan, like then you're just planning to fail. So make sure you show up and have a consistent routine and a plan. Okay, and this last tip I wanna go over is not tracking your progress. That is such a deterrent to sticking with the gym and just making gains in general. So there's two ways you can go about this. There's tracking your progress as in either tracking your weight loss or tracking your um, putting on weight or tracking your strength towards a goal or whatever it is you're training towards, tracking your progress from where you started to where you're at now to where you're trying to get. So you can actually see it. This was one of my favorite things that I did during 75 hard was I was able to see the pictures of me from day one and then on day 75 and all the pictures in the middle because that was one part of 75 hard. You had to take a progress picture every day. And there were days where I almost forgot, I didn't, but that was one thing that looking back at it, I'm really happy I did. And I really need to do more of is taking progress pictures. So you can see where you were like two weeks ago compared to now. You can see the growth you've made because that's going to give you the confidence to want to keep on going. The other thing is tracking your lifts in general. So even if you're not training for strength, knowing that the last time you were in the gym, let's say you're doing like a barbell bench, 
you did 185 for six reps for two sets of that. Knowing that, and then the next time you go in, knowing that you're gonna try and progressively overload and do a little bit more. So now you're gonna try and do 185 for two sets of seven reps, or maybe even seven reps and then six reps on the second set. And just tracking your actual training progress, so you can see that you're actually making progress each lift. One way that I've heard this be described is it's almost like allowing yourself to hit a rep PR or a set PR or a weight PR every single time you go in. So you get that kind of excitement of hitting a PR because I know we've all hit a PR at some point that we were really excited about. But by tracking your weights, sets, and reps for all of your lifts, this will allow you to hit either a weight, set, or rep PR pretty much every time you go into the gym. And you get that excitement that'll make you want to keep on going. But if you're not doing that, then you're not going to get that excitement. There's a chance you fall out of it, and that's going to kill your gains. Okay, so these are the 10 things that I think are probably the most common reasons that people are killing their gains. I hope you all enjoyed. Use code PTW2 at checkout for Bucked Up. The link will be in the description. All my links to my socials and everything will be in the description. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch y'all next Sunday at 5 p.m. Catch you there. Hey.